thinking about an emerald cut or astra cut for your engagement ring, then you're going to want to watch this video. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Clear Cut Classroom, where we take deep dives into all things diamonds and jewelry. Today we're going to talk about everything you need to know before buying your emerald or astra cut diamond. When you're shopping for an emerald cut or astro cut, it is really important to consider the step cut faceting. Well, the faceting on emerald cuts and ashers are different than other cuts. They're longer, bigger facets, and it kind of looks like a hall of mirrors. With this understated elegant faceting pattern, you're going to want to prioritize certain C's and compromise on others. With the step cut faceting, there's nowhere for inclusions to hide. So when it comes to clarity, you're going to want to really focus on a higher clarity diamond. Clarity refers to the natural inclusions that get caught in the diamond during formation. With the step cut faceting, there's nowhere for these inclusions to hide. So that's why we want to focus on the higher end of the clarity scale. The clarity scale goes flawless, internally flawless, VVS 1 and 2, which is very, very slightly included, VS 1 and 2, which is very slightly included, and SI 1 and 2, which is slightly included. I1, I2, I3 is included. The clarity is graded by the number, the intensity, and the position of these inclusions. Typically, you want to be VS1 and up with a step cut diamond to ensure that there is no visible inclusions to the naked eye. Sometimes you can go to a VS2 and have a really beautiful diamond that doesn't have any visible inclusions. This is considered eye clean. I've also seen a handful of SI1 clarities, but it's very unusual. So you want to really focus on the clarity. However, one great benefit to a step cut diamond is that the way the facets interact with light really mask color. So you can compromise a bit more on that C, the color scale. Color refers to the warmth and the undertones in the diamond. It starts at D, which is completely colorless. And with each step down in the alphabet down to Z, there's going to be incrementally more warmth in the stone. The most important thing is that you want the diamond to face up really nice, bright and white. With an emerald cut or asher cut, you can go from colorless to near colorless from the D to J scale and have your diamond face up really nice, bright and white. Sometimes you can even compromise a bit more and go to a K or L color without the diamond showing any warmth coming through. So focus on prioritizing clarity, but you're okay compromising a bit on color. If you're considering both of these step cut diamonds, what makes them different? Emerald cuts and asher cuts both have the step cut facets and the cut corners on the side. One distinction between the two is that if the diamond comes to a line called a keel line, that's going to be an emerald cut. So even if it's square in silhouette, if you see that keel line, that's going to be considered an emerald cut. If it comes to a perfect point, then you know it's an asher cut. Emerald cuts are typically rectangular in their silhouette. Most popular ratios for emerald cuts are between 1.3 and 1.4. That is the classic tennis court ratio but they can also be found longer above 1.4 and on the square side below 1.3. Asher cuts are typically perfectly square and come to that point. They have more of an art deco feel and they're a little less popular. One thing to consider with both of these cuts is that they are a deeper cut, so they don't show their carat weight as well as some other shapes like ovals or pear shapes or round brilliance, but it's part of the nature of the step cut facet. Let me know if you guys have any other questions if you're considering an emerald cut or astro cut for your engagement ring, and class is dismissed.